Today I published this circuit of a uh, MOSFET oscillator that worked on 10.7 MHz. And I found it very, very peculiar that when I changed the uh, inductance of that coil, and you can see my experiments here, the frequency did not change very substantially. So with 820 microhenry we are we were on 10.8 megacycles and even with such a say heavy coil or a tinier coil with le much less inductance say in a magnitude of 10 uh, it also oscillated on the same frequency well that gave me the idea that it could be possible to shortcut the whole coil. So that with a shortcut coil you also could get to the same frequency and that proved to be right. So here is the next schematic. Today there is no coil here and even without any coil and with a Shortcut between the gate and a drain, this oscillator works on approximately uh, 10.7 MHz. That's very strange, of course, uh, there must be, say, an uh, explanation for that. I can't give it, but anyway, perhaps there is someone in the uh, scientific scientific uh, community uh, about electronics etc that is able to explain this effect I made in the past uh, another video where I had the same um, type of oscillator <coughs> made but not with a MOSFET, but with a NPN or PMP silicon transistor. That had the same properties. Um, without a coil it oscillated on frequencies between uh, 20 MHz and approximately 100 MHz. And that could be changed by the a capacitor that went from the collector to the emitter and I will give the link in this video but of course we have to do here with another type of perhaps not another type but anyway uh, an oscillator that was not made with a bipolar transistor but with a MOSFET and that MOSFET is here and you can surely see here where the coil was. There is now a, a, a piece of wire. Everything is the same. Important to tell that the resistor to the source must be a power type. Uh, it gets quite hot. So I've used here a uh, 150 ohm resistor. But you can also use a 200 ohm power resistor or a 220 ohm power resistor. Uh, no problems with that. And this is the only schematic that stays. So let's put on the scope and see. Look at the frequency that's generated. Here we see that frequency, and in fact that's not bad, and it is on 11.19 uh, megahertz, 
and I had in the past say kind of comments that, that this could not work or it worked by say the parasitic uh, uh, inductance the coils that were not visible but anyway parasitic uh, but uh, I tested it over and over in the past and I also uh, have tried to shortcut out all the parasitic capacitance and it still worked I'm now talking about that NPN or PMP transistor circuit but on the other hand I'm more or less sure that I will meet the same issues here a uh, say transistor that oscillates on a certain frequency without any coil or any uh, external coil that's what I mean or external LC so uh, time dependent external time dependent unit the time dependency is say in my opinion at least as my ID generated inside that MOSFET so uh, we have a good very good waveform here I will lift up now the, the voltage. We are now on 13 volts. And now we are on 30 volts. So, 30 volts now here. Beautiful waveform. Uh, the resistor here will get very, very hot. That's normal. And we have a current of approximately 100 milliampere at 30 volts. So, anyway, a lot of energy, but it works. And the MOSFET also gets warm. I can feel that with my finger. Not hot, but warm. So, we go back to 12 volts. And with 12 volts we have of course a smaller amplitude. Lift up the amplification of the scope. A good waveform, by the way, that's no problem. And we are on 12 volts and we are on say 100 milliampere or so. So that's a it is in fact a very good circuit usable for all kinds of practical applications without any call it works on 11.1 megahertz so finally the circuit and thanks for watching